the football world was recently rocked by the untimely passing of Italian legend Gianluca Vialli. Today we take a look back at Vialli's incredible journey and legacy in football. Vialli's journey to football superstardom is not your typical path. Gianluca's father was a self-made millionaire and along with his mother and four siblings, Luca lived in a 60-bedroom mansion in Cremona, Lombardy. With financial security a given, Viali probably could have taken his pick from several career paths. But such was his love for the beautiful game and his determination to carve out his own success, Gianluca Viali pursued a career in professional football. It's no coincidence that throughout his career, any club he played for quickly started winning silverware. Viali's senior career started in 1980 when he signed for local club Cremonese, helping them to their first promotion in 54 years. Although playing as a winger, his goal-scoring ability quickly came to the attention of Syria A side Sampdoria, where he went on and enjoyed much success. Three Coppa Italia, one Super Coppa Italiana, one UEFA Cup Winners' Cup and of course the historic Scudetto title in 1991 which to this day remains Sampdoria's only league title in the club's history. Viali's telepathic partnership and friendship with Roberto Mancini won over neutral football fans all over Europe. But Sampdoria's euphoric highs wasn't without its heartbreaking lows either. Sampdoria lost in two additional European Cup Finals, including the 1992, now known as Champions League Final, where Gianluca lost to his childhood hero, Johan Cruyff, and his outstanding Barcelona side at Wembley Stadium. The game would prove to be Gianluca's last ever for the club. Unfortunately, Viali never quite made his mark on international football, but he did take great pride in wearing the iconic blue shirt each of the 59 times he represented his beloved Italy and scored 16 goals. Although perhaps not a prolific goal scorer, Gianluca Viali was in fact a scorer of a long list of incredibly spectacular and hugely important goals. He was also an all-round team player who was at the heart of everything, a trait recognized by Italian giants Juventus, who signed Viali that summer, making him, at the time, the world's most expensive player at 16.5 million euros. Viali was 28 years old and in his prime, but he struggled to find form in those early days in Turin. Juve manager Giovanni Trapattoni toyed with the idea of turning Viali into a midfield player. But after a string of bad results, Trapattoni was sacked and replaced by Marcello Lippi, a man who knew and valued Viali's goal-scoring abilities only too well from their time together at Sampdoria. Juventus boasted a sensational array of attacking options. Along with Viali, there was Roberto Baggio, Fabrizio Ravanelli, Pierluigi Casaraghi, Toto Schilacci, Andreas Muller, Paolo Di Canio, and of course, Alessandro Del Piero. Marcello Lippi's new regime was fierce. Organized and conditioned like an army of soldiers, Juventus became the most feared opposition in Europe. Many opponents were already psychologically beaten in the trenches before going into battle. In Lippi's first season in charge, Juventus won a domestic double, the Coppa Italia, and their first Scudetto title in nine years. In fact, they were narrowly denied a treble, losing in the final of the UEFA Cup, a competition that they won the year before. The pinnacle of Viali's career came at the end of the 1995-96 season, when he led Juve out as captain in the UEFA Champions League final in Rome. 
Viali knew only a short time before the final that the game would in fact be his last for Juve. Viali was determined to go out on a high and as a club, Juventus were determined to win their first European Cup since the Heisel disaster, where 39 fans were tragically killed and 600 more were injured after a security breach inside the stadium. A game that should have never gone ahead. A victory that was never truly enjoyed. 1-1 after 120 minutes and the destiny of the Champions League would be decided by the dreaded penalty shootout. Juventus goalkeeper Angelo Peruzzi saved two penalties and Viali could barely watch on as Juventus teammate Jugovic took the decisive spot kick. Viali and Juve had finally realized their dream and were crowned kings of Europe. Juventus went on to play in five more Champions League finals, but with defeat in 1997, 1998, 2003, 2015, and 2017 means that Viali to this day remains the last Juventus captain to lift the famous trophy. It was to be both Gianluca Viali and strike partner Fabrizio Ravanelli's last game for Juventus. Both men headed for the Premier League Ravanelli in a shock move to Middlesbrough and Viali to Ruud Hullet's Chelsea. Viali settled into life in London very quickly, a place he would continue to live long after his playing days. He won the FA Cup in his first season, but a fallout with Hullet seen his game time become very limited. Hullet himself later fell out with the Chelsea board and was subsequently sacked. His replacement? the first Italian to ever manage in the Premier League, 33-year-old Gianluca Viali. Viali initially continued in the joint role of player-manager and led Chelsea to success in both the League Cup and the Cup Winners' Cup, as well as finishing fourth in the league. Considering this was long before Chelsea started challenging for titles, this really was an impressive finish to the season. The following campaign, Chelsea won the UEFA Super Cup beating Real Madrid and finished the Premier League this time in third place, only four points behind the treble winning Manchester United. Chelsea had much to feel optimistic about. Viali decided to call time on his playing career so that he could solely concentrate on his duties as manager, scoring his 40th and final Chelsea goal in his last game against Derby County. Viali steered Chelsea to their first ever experience of Champions League football, where they reached the quarter-final, beating the mighty Barcelona 3-1 at home, but ultimately getting knocked out after a 5-1 defeat away in the second leg. There was no doubt Chelsea were taken to a new level under Viali, and expectations were now much higher. They finished the 1999-2000 season with more silverware, another FA Cup trial. Chelsea picked up where they left off by winning the Charity Shield at the start of the 2000-2001 season. It was Viali's fifth trophy in three years. But after a series of inconsistent results in the league, Viali was sacked just five games into the new season. A decision which not only shocked Viali, but one that he took very personally. It was an indication of just how much he loved Chelsea and football and indeed the affectionate person that he was. Viali did return to management with Watford, but the relationship only lasted one year and resulted in a lengthy court battle over wages owed. Gianluca then took a step back from management. In 2006, Viali released his autobiography, the Italian Job, a journey to the heart of two great footballing cultures, and 100% of the proceeds were donated to the foundation that he set up along with his dear friend Massimo Mauro to raise funds for research into cancer and ALS. Later, Viali became the face of Sky Italia and worked on various other TV projects. In November 2018, Viali revealed that he was secretly battling 
and had successfully overcome a year-long illness with pancreatic cancer. In 2019, he was approached by his long-term friend Roberto Mancini, who was now manager of the Italian national side. Viali was appointed delegation chief, a role of great importance in Italian football. This opportunity, along with the news that he was now declared cancer-free, meant that life was good again. Italy enjoyed an incredible 37-game unbeaten streak and went on to win their first European Championships since 1964. In the celebrations that followed, it was clear for all to see the close bond that Viali had with everyone involved. He was loved and appreciated among players, coaching staff and football fans everywhere. But in December 2021, Gianluca revealed that he had been diagnosed with the disease for a second time. Gianluca Viali passed away peacefully with his family by his side on the 6th of January 2023 at age 58. Loved not just for his incredible football talent, but simply for the person he was and will forever be remembered as described by many as a beautiful soul, funny, articulate, charming, and truly one of the great characters in the game, Gianluca Viali will be sorely missed, but forever remembered. just human we are not gods we produce memories and emotions we can affect people's lives i grew up in cremona a small town in the north of italy my parents they helped me to keep my feet firmly on the ground winning the italian championship with sampdoria it was a bit like the story of david versus goliath there was like an amazing joy That's a great I lost the Champions League final in my last game for Sampdoria and then four years later winning it with Juventus was really, really something special. You never lose. You either win or you learn. I want to become a Chelsea legend, so I want to score a lot for Chelsea. You can give people something to cheer about and forget about all the other problems that they're dealing with. Chelsea winning the European Cup with this cup. Everybody did great tonight and uh, I'm over the moon. Thank you very much and see you next season. You are the only person responsible for the energy that you bring in the dressing room. And I think generally in life is exactly the same so whatever energy that you want to carry with you and share with people you're responsible for that and i want to project good energy now to the world